the star, 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 the Oh, yeah, exactly. Wait, mm. okay. mm -hmm. so like mm -hmm. the narrative of, of belonging, right? And yeah. Like who fits where, yeah. and and making entry points, right? Um, mm -hmm. On the one hand, to me, I guess I would be like, okay, so cosmic could be a form of entry point. Right. So I'm not even thinking so much about like the biblical narrative as much as just like whatever. Or, or let's take like sci-fi or something. Love sci-fi. And then you like displace yourself into some totally other type of being that is theoretically not racialized, but right. it, will, it could be sometimes it is. Certainly. Um, in order to get at some sort of like inherent characteristic of yourself, like I am a bold, fierce warrior. Like yeah, like right. or you know I am a reflective, calm, whatever. Like mm -hmm. whatever you need that to be. Yes. And so on the one hand, I want to be like, that's useful. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, sometimes I feel like I've displaced myself into a pre-existing entry point mm -hmm. that is partially available to me, or that in some ways partially works. Mm -hmm. And that can be good in a including strength, keep going kind mm -hmm. of way, mm -hmm. um, but it's not enough. Mm. So, so actually, when I'm like, oh, see, see, it's because I, like, I resonate with the awkward weirdness of the just, like, <laughs> I just want to be quirky and do, like, stretches all the time. They're like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know? exactly. But then at the same time, it's like, but, you know, so CC has this, you know, like, the running narrative of, like, what are you? Are you? Mm -hmm. Don't deny your Aztec heritage. <laughs> I love that one so much, right? <laughs> that, you know, like, she's like, but... talking about specifics, right? And so sometimes you need like your specific entry point. And sometimes I'm like, can I just get this super light scan black girl that nobody knows what to do with? Can you please put her in a yeah. show? Yeah. But not yeah. make her a tragic mulata. Mm -hmm. Do not make her the hero. Mm -hmm. Do not make her Mariah Carey come to save the day. <laughs> no. Can it just be me? Can it just be like I'm here, yeah. not passing. Right. You might not know what to do with me, but but I'm here. Yeah, brought some tea. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> yes, and it, so that it's fantastic that you point that out. I was just because uh, I have a friend who studied films, filmmaker, and they talked about the trajectory that um, pe the oppressed individuals have taken in film. So the media right. representations and portrayals <clears throat> of black people, for example. Um, it is also mirrored in LGBTQ members on film, and it's something like you start off and you're like a villain, or you're, you're vilified, or you're made fun of, your embarrassment, whatever. Thinking of um, Birth of a Nation, I'm looking at you. So you have these moments, and then you get to the point where this is a person who like can have love, but you never see the person, the people kiss on them, right. but then they have to die. They have to die. Right. Because of the tragedy. And like you look at the the gosh, the all those the horror film, the classic horror films, like the it came from the Black Lagoon or Wolfman, like those original ones, those right. are all about xenophobia. Yep. Okay. And all of these people who are coming in from different shores. Now that you're no longer the immigrant and you're looking at all these immigrants, you're getting a little scared, ain't you? Think of how the Native Americans felt. You never did, did you? So then in these other films you have, um, so after they've sort of moved away from being completely vilified, they then can have like a love life, but they have to be punished for it. And then there's other, like, so they slowly but surely move into a point where you can start making fun of them, but it's not like, at the, or they're, they're like, they have a little bit more agency, right, mm -hmm. moving into that. Um, and now I'm thinking of Will and Grace. So I moved from um, more racial stereotypes to, um, LGBTQ was mm -hmm. Lily Grace was the first TV show I saw with a, a gay person in it that I remember being a kid. Um, and I was like, you can show that on TV? 
what? It was mind blowing. It, it exposed right. me to something that I'd never been exposed to before. Right. Um, and it helped to, and this is how, so this is how people learn about other people that, that they don't have in their life. Um, this is an act to see why people think black people are crazy. Cause if all you know is the black people on TV and yeah, them some crazy folks. But I think, um, these are opportunities to establish norms, but oftentimes they reinforce stereotypes. Um, and when you have this kind of, tr um, trajectory then you do end up using patterns and uh, tropes. So something like the tragic mulatto. Um, I took a class where we specifically looked at the book and then the film version of some story of the of the United States of America that dealt specifically with race right. and how it, at specific points of change. So we looked at Birth of a Nation, right. um, sh um, Showboat. Showboats. Showboats and Imitation of Life. Yeah. Uh, feelings about that. Yeah. Feelings about that. All of these things. <laughs> because the original films right. um, that showed, like, Imitation of Life, for example, the young girl, this is a white woman who hires a black woman to take care of her child. The black woman has a little girl. And the little girl, quote unquote, passes, but her mother catches her passing when she's younger and she's embarrassed, so she leaves early and then she comes. So there's all this tragedy. But the person that played this little girl who was supposed to be mixed in the story wasn't black. She no. was Hispanic. So it's the same thing now, like when you look at LGBTQ films, a uh, transparent. It's on right now on Amazon Prime getting all these awards. It's a father who transitions late in life um, and become identifies as a lesbian, played by a straight male identified actor. Not a not a transgender actor. So it's like these right. moments where you can't even play yourself in your own story. Right. That's where we are. Right. right. Yes. Somebody else has to try your story on first. And I mean, yes, I've okay, acted, but this is a separate level of, of sure. trying on. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I would, I would even argue that sometimes that kicks back to that mm -hmm. whole like. Like, say if you're Messiah. Like, mm -hmm. like, like, I'm gonna stand up. And I'm gonna do this role for your people. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, yes, but, yes. But that's the thing, right? So true. And then, mm -hmm. and then, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's say you have you have somebody like Rashida Jones. Yeah. Yes. There's how many times does she play a black woman? Or how many times does she be ethnic friend oh. and I have really issues with like well, the way we use yeah. ethnic oh yeah including when people are like let's get ethnic food yeah mm -mm, mm -mm. like we can't hang out don't call me that we can't hang out no like, we're done Rosa, lose my number <laughs> but like I love Rashida Jones right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at no point in parks and recreation mm -hmm. in the office you know, mm -hmm. in the office a little bit oh yeah 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 at no point is she black. Hmm. Hmm. Like and 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 parts of right. Uh, but Leslie Leslie always makes this sort of like ongoing like, oh, you're so perfectly beautiful and usually ambiguous like the future of America. And on the one hand, I think that's really well done and kind of funny because because like, right, right. people are always like, oh, you're so different. Right, and we have this kind of creepy fetish about like the weird. You're brown, True. but you're not too brown. Right, and you speak English. You hit this sweet spot. Right, yeah. And we have this kind of like creepy fetish in that. And we're like, oh yeah, one day America's just gonna be beautiful and golden, and like, mm. no, I'm, I need the spectrum. Okay, <laughs> no, I need the spectrum. Don't wash me out. Right, I need all yeah. these like you know. <sighs> mm. But on the, the flip side of that is. Mm -hmm. Is that me just reading it as I want it to be mm. and read the mm. show as calling out and mocking that American fetish? Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. or is it really kind of a failure that like mm. none of her characters are like, actually I'm black. I'm black. Right. Like right. I could be Latina but I'm not. I could be Jewish, but I'm not. Yeah. I'm black. Just claiming it up front. Right. And then also hmm. So if we expect that from our media too, when do we do that in our real lives? Because because then you have to ask, at what point am I still responsible for how you feel about me? Yes. Because yes. 
But there's got to be some mm-hmm. line. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right? Like, I can't say that every five minutes every time I walk into a room. <laughs> like, right. Like, that's okay, guys. Look, here's my credentials here. Everybody see that? We're all good? All right, thanks. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, you missed black. Yeah, okay. Capital B. <laughs> 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 yes. Yes. Because, yeah. Mm. Because I'm not responsible for the way that you create space or perceive space. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I'm aware of the fact that, like, different space creates different meaning. True. Sure. You know? Very true. Well, I'm thinking about, because I have to say this, because we're talking about the way that Hollywood portrays people and how it takes their stories away from them. You will have someone like Renee Zellweger, I think her name is, who did Bridget Jones's Diary. Love that movie. Love all of them. But I distinctly remember after either the first or second one, she shows up at an award ceremony. And she is... This bit, right? See what I did there? And everybody is talking about how brave she was to take on this role and how gorgeous she looks now, specifically after this film. And so I have noticed that there will be Hollywood standards, beauty standards, who will put on weight, who will do a role, and afterwards they'll get all this acclaim, they'll lose all of the weight, and then be considered even more beautiful. And I'm like... As nice as it is to see someone who isn't a size zero on in a, a, a leading role, you just took a role from somebody who is actually that size in real life. Right. And so that what that means then is certain people have access to being able to represent and tell those stories. Right. And the people who exist in those stories in real life don't have access to be able to tell those stories. Right. And so as someone who has been a bigger person who is voluptuous and curvy. Mm -hmm. I see these stories as failings when I saw Renee Zellweger and she was like, she was, I I knew she couldn't breathe. She was in this like long evening gown, blue thing. (laughs) Like she was struggling. She was struggling. Goodness gracious. And it, it was like to make a point that I'm not really that girl that you saw on the screen. This is what I really look like. Thank Ooh. you for your adoration. Right? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Problematic. Right? Mm. Um, and so that's, that's always just been a point of contention and frustration for me. Um, as we've said, people not having access to their stories. Being able to tell them. That thing you said, there's something... I don't, I'm not sure where to start with it, but like, I'm not really that girl. Mm. Uh, Cause that's like, I feel like that's like, that's everything, right? Yeah, yeah. That girl. Mm. Hmm. That girl. <laughs> Are you that girl? Mm. Are you one of those kind of girls? Mm. Maybe she will. Maybe she won't. Is she that girl? Right, like it's like a cycle of the. The that girl, and then the that goes, hmm. mm. because that has to do with whose story you use. Because mm-hmm. sometimes, sometimes people want to be that girl for the evening. Yes, and they take it back off. That's right? right, exactly. It's something you could put on and take off, like an affectation. It's that it's so easy to lose weight. I don't understand why you can't. Look at Renee Zellweger; she gained and lost that. And so, like it, it messes with people's expectations, management of expectations for things like weight body size, um, your youthfulness, or attaching beauty to specific things that in Hollywood standards can be bought and sold uh, that the rest of the population doesn't have access to. Thankfully, though, thanks to technology being what it is now, you can get a TV that has like all these pixels really, really close so you have a better view. Don't get it if you watch daytime TV because you will then see all of the work that goes into getting those faces the way they look. And it's, it's a rough <laughs> it's a rough time. It'll it'll mess up your life. Okay? It's Just all an illusion. Good. It really is. Really all of this is. What's to say that the experience you're having right now isn't being manifested? How do you know you're really having it? Oh, sleep dog. <laughs> 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 
And if you have ideas of what you'd like to see these monks talk about, let us know in the comments below. We're listening. Finally, try this tea. Is why I'm gonna go. I'm having a tea because I drank a glass of water. <laughs> and on that note, we're gonna cut. <laughs>